Hey, blessed and pleasant. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer. Today is the seventh day of April, and it is Good Friday. I do pray you had a wonderful Monday, Thursday yesterday, and that you are looking forward to a blessed Good Friday, and indeed, a wonderful Easter Tridium weekend. We're going to kick things off this morning with one entitled, He Never Said a mumbling word. Let's have this. And they hung him on the cross. They hung him on the cross. They hung him on the cross for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on the cross. They hung him on the cross for me. They whooped him up the hill. They whooped him up the hill. They hooked him up the hill for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on a cross. They hooked him up the hill for me. And they spit him in the side. They spit him in the side. They spit him in the side for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on a cross. They spit him in the side for me. What he said, he never said a mountain and wood, he never said a mountain and wood, he never said a mountain and wood for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on a cross. He never said a mountain and wood for me. What are they gonna do? He's coming back again, he's coming back again, he's coming back again for me. One day when I was lost. They hung him on the cross. He's coming back again for me. That's right. Coming back now with me. Sing it. He's coming back again. Come on over here. Coming back again. He's coming back again for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on the cross. He's coming back again for me. What'd he do? He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on the cross. He hung his head and died for me. What did he say? He never said a mountain and wood. He never said a mountain and wood. He never said a mountain and wood for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on the cross. He never said a mountain and wood for me. Right. That was a good one. That one there entitled, He Never Said a Mumbling Word. And indeed, never said a mumbling word. He did not complain. He did not argue. He simply accepted the will of God. We're going to continue then with getting our words here up on screen for today, April the 7th in 2020, as we celebrate Good Friday. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, whom the Lord has afflicted. Words from Lamentations chapter 1, verse 12. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Our prayer of intent. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, our praise, and our thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of our goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our reason and the Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Venite, which is based on Psalm 95, verses 1 through 2. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is the great God, and the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it, his hand molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his kind. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with history. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. At this time, we pause briefly to call to mind those things that in thought, whether indeed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to our mighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things that might have been unkind even to our themselves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of God. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left We may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 22. Let's have a listen. Psalm 22 My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? O my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of passion surround me. They open wide their jaws at me, like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a pot shirt. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. The pairs, my hands, and my feet. I can count all my bones. 
They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword. My life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. My wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor, their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations bow down before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall say, They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn, saving deeds that he has done. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle, A Song of Penitence. O ruler of the earth, Lord God, host of the heavens, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. <clears throat> with all their vast array. In your presence they tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart, and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises. Yours is the glory, for ages of ages. Amen. Up next, we have our Bible reading, and our Bible reading comes from the book of John, chapter 13, verse 36 to 38. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 36 through to 38. 
Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterwards. Peter said to him, Lord, why cannot why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Very truly I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A very short portion of scripture this morning for Good Friday. <clears throat> Pardon me, and my voice is not doing a hundred percent, but we'll see how we make it there. A very short portion of scripture, 36 to 38. That is a minimum of two verses or three verses at the most, right? And it is a very powerful portion of scripture. If you would remember, if you read the Gospel of John, and today I suggest that if you find time, you read chapter 13 of the Gospel of John. Chapter 13 begins, of course, with verses 1 through to 17, where Jesus prepares himself to serve. Yeah, he's prepared to serve. It begins with the washing of his disciples' feet at the last meal before he is arrested. And that is something we would have celebrated yesterday when we had our Monday Thursday services. And someone asked me, why is it called Monday Thursday? And please know that the word Monday is a version of the Latin word mandatum, which is translated as commandment. And it is called Monday Thursday or Thursday of the commandment because that is the day when the Lord celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples. And what he said to them at the Last Supper, what he commanded them was, in as often as you do this, do this for the remembrance of me. And that is where the mandatum came and where the Monday comes from in the Monday Thursday. And of course, we know that before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus washes the feet of his disciple at that last meal, he not only serves them, but he commands them to go out and to serve others. He knew that his hour had come. He knew that he should depart from the world and go to the Father. He had loved his disciples as his own. And we have heard yesterday the prayer that he would have said for them. It was also that this last supper that Jesus revealed those who would betray him and those who would deny him. Yeah. And supper being ended, the reading told us earlier, and the devil having put in the heart of Jesus, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray Jesus, we know how that is going to end. Yeah. And we know that Judas was selected for a time such as that. And even Jesus himself, when we looked at the prayer yesterday, prayed and was thankful to God that he didn't lose one except the one who was meant to be lost. Yes. And all things according to God's plan is what we hear, you know. And after Jesus washed the disciples' feet, he will then go into that um, whole exchange and, <coughs> pardon me, and he would have to reveal to them, yeah, what was going to happen next. And it's interesting because at the end of that portion of scripture, after Jesus has told them the importance of following his humble example of service, yes, a servant is no greater than his master, he tells them. Jesus sends Judas away to go and do what he's supposed to do. And Judas is gone, and now there is a exchange that is going to happen between Simon Peter and Jesus. Yeah? And this exchange comes right there in verse 36. Hmm? And Jesus has just said, one of you will betray me and one of you will deny me. And <laughs> I could imagine what the boys were thinking. They were probably thinking, you know what? Um, it can't be me. I love this man way too much for it to be me. And Jesus, of course, will declare to them that the cross is going to be his final destination, but it's not going to be a end of humiliation. It's going to be supreme glorification. Now the Son of Man is glorified and God is glorified in him. Yes, 
is what he said in verse 31 and 32. And he plainly reveals his soon, his soon departure. In verse 33, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. Hmm? And it is this, where I am going, you cannot come, that Jesus and Peter will have a conversation about. Jesus gives them a new commandment in verse 34 to 35, where he tells them a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And by this they will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And I could imagine the disciples thinking, how could he even have to tell us about love when he knows how much we love him, when he knows how much we will be behind him a hundred percent of the way. And he's talking about love, but he just tells us that he has to depart from us. And so Simon Peter says to him, okay, Lord, where are you going? Because Peter's love for Jesus was so strong that he felt in his heart of heart that he was committed to follow Jesus no matter where Jesus was going. And Jesus answered him, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterwards. And Peter's response, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. And a little bit later on, he's going to cut off somebody else when they try to arrest Jesus to show that, you know what, I am willing to die for you. But Peter's mind is still fixed on the wrong thing. Peter's mind, like the minds of so many others around Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, on the night of his arrest, was in a place where they were still looking for a war hero. They were still looking for somebody that was going to, through violence and authority, take over as the Messiah. They could not see that Jesus was about to lay down his life for them. And it is interesting because after Peter tells him, Lord, why can I not follow you? I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus seems as if though he's almost now, <laughs> not with mocking scorn, but with a sense of, what do you call this? Sarcasm. Peter knew he was a disciple of Jesus and the disciple's duty was to follow the rabbi. Peter felt so committed to his discipleship and, and to Jesus, that not only would he follow, but he was willing also to lay down his life for Jesus' sake. And we believe Peter. He would have died for Jesus right there and then, but he later failed because his devotion was based on emotion in that moment. And in the soon-to-come crisis, <laughs> emotions play no weight. Huh? And it's interesting because we could say that Judas' denial of Jesus was deliberate and planned, set out by God. And Peter's denial of Jesus was maybe spontaneous and accidental. His denial was terrible. Huh? But he was no longer walking in emotional hype for following the cross. He was walking in a different emotion when he denied Jesus, one of fear. And he confidently said, I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus says, uh-huh. Will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you would have denied me three times. <laughs> Peter confidently said that he would follow Jesus and even die for him. Yet when the test came, he could not stand being laughed at for Jesus' sake. He could not stand the thought of being persecuted for Jesus' sake. To him, a servant girl's tongue was sharper than any executioner's sword. And by the next morning, he would have denied that he even knew Jesus, much less be willing to lay down his life. When Peter protested, Jesus showed him that he knew all the weaknesses that was lurking within him better than he himself, Peter, would have known. And as we journey with Christ to the cross today, in our individual churches, whether it's the Stations of the Cross or the Veneration of the Cross or the Meditations on the Last Word, whatever is done in our churches today. I pray that we reflect on Peter. I pray that we recognize that worship and service to Almighty God should not come from a moment of emotional hype. It should be a lifelong, heartfelt commitment. Peter quickly said, 
I will lay down my life for you. But then just as quickly said, I do not know the man. And can you imagine how Peter felt? I do not know the man three times and then have to watch Jesus go through the torment that he will suffer that will lead to his death. Peter's denial as shown for us in the Bible never left his memory. In Acts chapter 3 and you could read it if you'd like in Acts chapter 3 when Peter preached he charged them with denying Jesus towards the end of his life in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 yeah, he describes some dangerous men as those who denied the Lord. His denial never left his mind. And the resurrected Jesus, when he meets him on the shore that morning with fish, will ask Peter three times, the same amount of time that Peter denied. He will ask Peter three times, Peter, dost thou love me? Almost as if to put into place checks and balances that the three-time denial would also be three times an expression of love after the resurrection. And I wonder if we recognize how often we deny Christ. I wonder if we recognize how true our actions or our lack of action we deny Christ. I wonder if we are plagued by the denials that we act upon in our minds after we have committed them or if they're just fleeting thoughts that depart from us. And our denial might not be vocal like we say we do not know the man like Peter, but if he's commanded them and us to love when we refuse to show love to others, are we not denying Christ? When we refuse to live in good over evil, even in the smallest of choices, are we not denying Christ? Are we not aware that it is our denial of him that separates us from his cross? Judas denied the messiahship of Jesus and it led to the crucifixion. How long will we deny Christ? Maybe not in our words, but far more importantly, in our actions. Today, as we reflect on the fact that Christ is heading to the cross, may we reflect on the fact that he is not denying the will of God. He will never say a mumbling word, but humbly follow after his master and Lord, all the way to the cross to lay down his life. May we be willing to deny the world in order to follow behind the cross of Christ. May our words not be empty words like Peter. May we be willing to even to the point of laying down our life, follow behind the cross of Christ. May it be our prayer to ask for God's forgiveness for the times that we have denied him. To ask for his grace and mercy to keep us from falling into moments of denial and of denying him. As we reflect upon the cross and the crucifixion of Christ today, may we remember that as he hung on the cross, it was for us that he was willing to die. That he knowing as Alpha and Omega, the end from the beginning, already knows exactly when our moments of weaknesses will be as he knew Peter's moments of weakness. But though he knows our weaknesses, he looks beyond our faults to find our need and the need for God's love and salvation was far more important to him than us denying him. So he chose in love to bear that cross. Father, forgive us for the moments where we do not know what we are doing 
in denying you through our words and our actions. Sustain us that in your cross, we may forever continue to glory. Recognizing and acknowledging your love won for us through Jesus Christ. And being willing to follow wherever he leads. Sharing our love. Amen. Let us continue with the profession of our faith. The words of the Apostles. Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the earth. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in thee. Our first collet for this morning is the collet for Good Friday. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most their son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to send birthday greetings to the following individuals. We send birthday greetings to Mr. Levan Gumbra, Ms. Sharon Belay, Ms. Deandra Williams, and Mr. Eric Hughes, as well as Mr. Radwell Ferguson Sr. and Mr. Dave Brackett Jr. Those of you celebrating birthdays today, we pray Almighty God will grant you many more years of life and that His blessings will be upon you now and forever. We remember in memoria Mr. Brenton Brackett and Mr. Gregory Gate would have been celebrating a birthday today. In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Joyce. 
We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Beth, Miss Aisling, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soyla, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, and Miss Kim. Pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, and Miss Dorin. Pray for Miss Betty, Miss Marta, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss Lashard, Miss Althea, Miss Teresa, Miss Molly, Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlette, Miss Rolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, and Miss A. We pray for Miss Priscilla, Miss Jean, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Del Doreen, Miss Doreen, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle. We pray for Miss Verily, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine. We pray for Miss Alair, Miss Nina, Miss Leonor, Miss Gladys, Miss Robin, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita King, Miss Richie, Miss Joan, Miss Ismay, Miss Anne, Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kalia, Miss Velina, Reverend Ilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Reverend Linda, Miss Carolyn, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Brenda G, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominic, Miss Nadia, Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Perla, Michelle Madine, Miss Susan, and Miss Elizabeth. In our prayers, we pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, Mr. Belham, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Father Jerris, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Carlos. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, and Mr. Sean. We pray for Father Leroy, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Sanders, Mr. Michael Sabaranis, Mr. Glendale, Mr. Ambrose, Bishop Nicasi, Bishop Wright, Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Earl Sr., Mr. Richard, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Daly, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Mr. Irving, Mr. Kieran, and Mr. Paul. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray, especially for the family of Thomas Emmanuel, the family of Miss O'Neill and Young, the family of Miss Queen of Passos Prior, the family of Miss Victoria Ramos, the family of Miss Brenda Card Stewart, for all those who recently laid a loved one to rest, and all those who are grieving the passing of a loved one. We pray that Almighty God will grant you his comfort and mercy during this time of bereavement, and we pray for return and rest for those who love you. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We continue to remember and pray for our students, praying for Amit, Anwar, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Randolph, Ashley, Rhea, Kai, Elton, Arian, and El Garrett, and Nana. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Jason, Emil, Andy, Prince, Jay, Gavin, Charles, Larry, Sam, Alvin, and Tisha. We continue to pray for the protection and enablement of all our medical professionals in the performance of their lives. We remember and pray for especially Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Arnold, Ariaga, Chogreen, Ken, Arana, Eck, Lawrence, Joseph, Sosa, and Ira. We remember and pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKean, Queen Ferreira, Morel, Shirley, Choicely, Alberta, Aaron, Alejandra, Olivia, Julie, and Ashley. In our prayers, we continue to pray for all our medical professionals, both in public and private institutions, as well as all those who work in their various capacities in our medical system. We continue to pray for persons who would have contracted COVID-19, those in the various form of um, isolation. We pray for 
persons who man the isolation wards, we continue to pray for a cure, the containment, and an elimination of this COVID-19. God, thanks for the availability of a vaccine. We remember and pray for all those who have died as a result. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We remember and pray for persons who would have lost employment, persons who would have been struggling, persons who are struggling to meet financial need. We pray for persons who are the most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the elderly, persons with pre-existing health conditions, persons battling with cancer or any form of autoimmune illness. We continue to remember and pray for persons who are battling with mental health challenges. We pray for persons who are battling with substance abuse issues. We continue to remember and pray for our security forces, for the government, for the churches, church leadership, for the private sector, for our non-governmental organization involved in the fight against COVID, or in any form of humanity. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the members of the international those most severely affected, those affected by the ravages of war, those affected by the ravages of natural disaster. We pray for all persons in their various circumstances and we pray and remember those who are in the various stages of recovery following these instances. We continue to pray and give God thanks for his continual blessing over us, even as we pray for protection for ourselves and our region. For the prayers of our hearts and our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God will hear us. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments. Under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in the soul. To Jesus Christ, our Lord. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining us for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in the presence of Almighty God. It is a blessing for me to be able to greet each new day in your presence as well. Outside, the wind is blowing, the sea looks angry, the sun is shining. It's going to be a warm, good Friday today. I want to thank all those of you who joined us yesterday in person at St. John's Cathedral for the Monday Thursday service of the renewal of vows the blessing of oil and the agape meal. It was indeed a lovely service and to be able to gather after three years of not being able to gather fully, it was a lovely service indeed. That service was broadcasted live on our Facebook page, the Anglican Diocese of Belize and all our affiliated Facebook pages. If you did not catch that, you can still go back and see a copy of that on our Facebook page. We apologize for the fact that there was no Bible study last evening. Thursday evening, Maudy Thursday was a difficult one, but we had hoped that something would have been able to happen. I do hope you found yourself in a Maudy Thursday service last evening. And even if you didn't, even if you didn't, do not be alarmed. You still have time to get a service in over this Tridium weekend, an Easter Tridium weekend, which is Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and of course, Holy Saturday. Because of course, Easter begins on Sunday morning, bright and early. A reminder, um, for those of you who might be interested, I am still awaiting, I was supposed to receive from the office, the um, schedule of services in our churches across the country. I have not received that as yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to check on it again in a little while. I know for the Parish of Christ the King, today our service is from 10 to midday for our Good Friday services. I think most churches are doing 10 to midday. Um, be on the lookout for the announcement of services in your individual locations for this morning and then um, I believe some churches are holding the Holy Saturday Vigil in the Parish of Christ the King in St. Jerome's in Hopkins we will be having a Saturday evening lighting of the fire and vigil service 
there will be no Easter Sunday service in Hopkins this Sunday because we're doing the vigil on Saturday night. The people there said that it's been a while since we've lit the Easter fire and so we're replacing that service this evening. The Parish of Christ the King at 5 a.m. on Easter Sunday morning, we will light the Easter fire in darkness and bring in then Easter morning, right? Following that, we have Easter Eucharist service at 9, 8 a.m. in St. Monica's and then 10 a.m. in St. Matthew's. So if you're in the South, these are the service times for our services for Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. Please remember on Holy Saturday, we have cross-country cycling. Be careful if you're going to be out on the road. Please pray for the safety of all the riders that are participating in that race as well. These are my notices for this morning. Remainder of today, please be on the lookout. Following this broadcast, we'll have noonday devotions. And I believe we have the meditation on the last of the seven words of Christ that is going to be broadcasted as well. There's a special version of evening prayer and compliance for Good Friday that will take place. So do be on the lookout today as well. I pray you have a blessed and beautiful Good Friday. Um, and that, of course, God's blessings continue to be with you for the entire weekend ahead. We're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace to dismissal and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a luncheon to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks to God. We're going to close off with a very special one this morning. This one from Sister Mahalia Jackson, entitled, Were You There When They Crucified Man? I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful Good Friday, a blessed and beautiful Easter weekend. We will see you on Tuesday morning. There is no service on Monday morning. So whoever is going to take a recovery day from the Easter weekend. Tuesday morning, bright and early. Same place same time. To then, do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe.
Raiders. 